And for those of you who don't know where Yucaipa is, that's down in Southern California. That was where I was born and raised. And uh, up until uh, about 20 years ago, lived and worked there, served for a while in Mission Viejo, California, as a senior minister for a church there. But then God called us to Charlotte, North Carolina. Any of you ever been to Charlotte, North Carolina? Okay. Any of you ever been to just North Carolina? How many won't raise your hand no matter what question I ask you? Okay, good. Thank you for the honesty. I appreciate that. We lived 20 years there, my wife and I. No, not 20. Uh, 18 years there, my wife and I. And moving from the land of chips and salsa back to the land of biscuits and gravy was, was tough on a brother. That's all I'm going to say. And uh, so we've been back a year, and we're trying to, you know, shed some of the <clears throat> southern weight that we uh, brought back with us. But I came back because of just a, a really, really dear friend who kept saying, what's the next chapter of your life going to be about? And so what I get to do is I get to help raise up the next generation of young Christian leaders at a place called Pepperdine University. Pepperdine is down in beautiful Malibu, California. But what many people don't know is that George Pepperdine was a young Christian man, uh, actually a member of the Independent Christian Church, uh, pardon me, a member of the Churches of Christ from uh, Kansas, came up with an idea when cars were brand new, right, that they're going to need parts for these newfangled things called cars. So he started a mail-order car parts company called Western Auto. And some of you may remember Western Auto stores in the Midwest and even here in California made a boatload of money and then moved out to Los Angeles and said there ought to be a Christian school out here. And so picked a spot in Los Angeles, actually not far from Watts, a spot where for a number of years, in fact, in 1937, he said we ought to start a school and got a group of guys together. And they said, well, Mr. Pepperdine, when are you thinking about starting it? It was January. And he said this fall. And they said, there's no way we can do that. And he says, yes, there is. I'll write the checks. And they said, okay. So um, they started in fall with 14 students. There are 3,000 undergraduate students now at Pepperdine University and another 3,000 graduates. And Pepperdine University is a place where, uh, go to, go to, I think I got a picture of it. If you go to that slide, guys, maybe, or maybe not. Um, but if you ever get a chance to go, you drive into Pepperdine past this 60-foot cross. There we go, yeah. That's the Pacific Ocean there to the left, and that, that giant kind of skinny thing down there is this huge cross tower. And uh, a number, and by that I mean like 20% of our students don't even know Jesus when they come there. They come from all over the world. So it is a mission field. And if you're a young person or if you have a young person who's uh, looking for a college, uh, Pepperdine was ranked uh, in the top 100 colleges in the nation. I mean, just take them all and rank them. Harvard, and Yale, and Stanford beat us. We're a little bitter about it. But, uh, but Pepperdine was like number 54 or 56 in that list. It is tough to get into. We got 10,000 applications for 740 freshman spots. But I will tell you a secret. If you're a Christian young person and you are committed to coming there and living a whole life for Jesus, there are scholarships and opportunities for you. So uh, tomorrow night or the next night, if you've got questions about it, ask me. But Pepperdine allows me just to, to travel and try and, you know, put in a good word for them. And so my request is that you'd pray for Pepperdine University. Pray for our religion division. Pray for that, that school as they seek to lift up Jesus. Uh, whole. Everybody say whole. whole. Now, last night we talked about being whole, but we said there's a, this biblical word for it that is the presence of God. And when you are centered in the presence of God, then you and the space where you are and your purposes become, what was the word we talked about? Holy, right. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty holy, different, set apart. Somebody asked me last night before I left, they said, what's the definition? I mean, what does the word holy really mean? And I thought it's a really good question. It, there's been a lot of people written things about the word holy. Um, set apart is one of the definitions. For a special purpose is another definition. A little more churchy definition is sanctified. By the way, that's why we call this space in many churches a sanctuary because it is a set-apart, special space. But as we discussed last night, the most set-apart and special space in the world is you, your space. 
Because God comes to live not in buildings, but in bodies. We ought to put that on a t-shirt. Uh, God, comes to, God comes to live within us. And yet still, we struggle. Because sometimes you just miss the obvious. I'm going to read in just a moment from the 13th chapter of the Gospel of John. If you got that on your iPad or phone or old school Bible, that's cool. But I'm just going to, I'm going to read a text in just a second. And when I read it, you're going to miss something that's really obvious, because I think Peter did too. Uh, I don't know about you, but I, I often miss things should be right in front of me. How many have ever looked for their glasses when they're on your head? Have you ever done that? Yeah. Or look for their keys when you're on, the, you know, they're on your belt, or, or you got them in your purse. You know, you got them right there, but you, where, where are they? Where are they? They're right there. My favorite story of missing the obvious is the guy in Boston on St. Patrick's Day that walked into a little pub and said, I'll raise a Guinness in honor of Ireland with anybody here. And the guy swiveled around on a stool and said, are you Irish? He said, yeah, I'm Irish. He said, I'm Irish too. He said, wait a minute, were you born in Ireland? He said, I was born just north of Dublin in a little village called Killearn. He said, I was born in Killearn. No! So they fall on each other's neck and hug each other and raise a Guinness and start swapping stories. And they said, well, no, wait a minute, if you're born in Killeran, where'd you go to school? He said, I went to St. Mary's. He said, I went to St. Mary's. No, they're hugging. He said, okay, wait, 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 wait. If you went to St. Mary's, what year did you graduate? He said, I graduated in 19 and 61. He said, I graduated St. Mary's in 1961. Oh, they're drinking and laughing. And at this, the bartender just walks away. And somebody says, Mick, what's wrong with you? He says, I'm sick and tired of it. The O'Malley twins are drunk again. <laughs> now... The reason, and they could have been French or English, okay, but the reason that I love that story is because I have O'Malley moments in Scripture when I'm reading along in the Bible and something is like right here, like my glasses or my keys, and I don't see it. So you ready? Let me see if you spot this. Preface. Jesus is about to die. The disciples don't know this. They don't know they're at the Last Supper. They don't know it's going to be a painting, right? They don't know it's going to be an amazing moment. They don't know that they're going to be on the Sistine Chapel. They just know it's Passover. And the Master said, we're going to celebrate Passover. And they're all in this room together, and they're doing what you do at Passover, which is feast and remember God. They're all reciting, Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu, blessed are you, O Lord God Almighty. They're saying the prayers. They're telling the story of the Exodus, just like the Hebrews have done for years. And then all of a sudden, Jesus changes everything. Beginning about verse 33. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told you, so I tell you now. Where I'm going, you cannot come. I think I've got this text if you jump about two more. And by the way, thanks to the techies who are riding the alligator back there and trying to find all these. About two verses more, two slides more, I think we'll get to it. A new command I give you. Love what? One another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you're my disciples. If you love one another. And Simon Peter, this is the next sentence. <laughs> this cracks me up. Simon Peter asked him, Lord, where are you going? Okay, did you catch what just happened? It was the obvious, but it's hard to catch. I'm going to do it one more time. Jesus says, my little children, I'll be with you only a little longer. You'll look for me just as I told the Jews. So I tell you now where I'm going, you cannot come. But a new command I give you, love one another. Even as I've loved you, so you must love one another by this. Everyone will know that you're my disciples if you love one another. And Simon Peter asked him, question in the back, where are you going? Okay, am I wrong, or did Simon Peter miss the greatest commandment ever given by anyone, anywhere, right? Did Simon Peter miss the moment, the word, Jesus says, by this, all men will know that you're my disciples. No matter how cool your t-shirts are, it's not your t-shirts. No matter how awesome your hat is, it's not your hat. It's not the big giant cross bling you got around you. It's not the, it's not the cross ring or the tattoo of the entire book of Leviticus all over you. That's not it. 
Those things all may be cool, but Jesus says, by this shall all men know that you're my disciples. Not by the way you carry a big black book or even by the way you quote scripture. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples. By the way that you love each other. A holy us. A holy way of relating. Jesus did not come to begin a way of living that was just, you know, the two chairs stacked last night, just me and God, me and God, me and God. Okay, I'm just a holy person, and I just, I want to just, everything else just get out of the way, and it's just me and God, me and God. Even Jesus, when he was asked, what's the greatest commandment? He, he, he didn't just give him one. In fact, he gave him two that are wed together like twins that are connected, conjoined. He says, you love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor Lean over and whisper to the person next to you, you're my neighbor. Go ahead and tell him, you're my neighbor. Yeah, yeah. Some are saying, can I move? No, 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 your neighbors. <laughs> love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Jesus says it's not about just you being holy, you know, holy me. It's about holy us. Because by this, he says, all men will know you're my disciples. And Peter goes, can I ask a question? Where are you going? Does he sound like a kid to you? I'm serious. In fact, it's interesting. Jesus starts with my little children. And Peter says, where, where are you going? And Jesus says to him, I'm sorry, it's right here. Where I'm going, you cannot follow now, but you will follow later question? Peter says, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I mean, I'll lay down my life for you. I mean, oh, can't, let me go. <laughs> when our kids were little, we have three boys, Taylor, Riley, and Spencer. Only they're not Taylor, Riley, and Spencer anymore. They're Taylor, Riley, and Spencer. And, but when they, when, when they were here, Catherine was such a, a great and devoted mom, and it was hard at times to get her to take time away from the boys. But when we would, my older sister sometimes, or my mom, or, or, or one of our relatives would come and stay with the boys. And there's this sweet moment when we are packed and we are ready to go. We are getting away for an anniversary trip. And we sit down with the boys that night and say, now listen, tomorrow grandma's coming and Aunt Thede is coming and they're going to stay with you for the next five days. Why? Because mom and I are going to go away. What do they want to know? Where are you going? <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> really? Yeah, but where are you going? Mom and I are just going down to a, a place called Anaheim. We're just kind of, we're just going... <laughs> And that they already know, you go to Disneyland. No, no, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. You get to be with Grandma. What's the next question? Just like Peter, why can't we go? We want to go with you. No, that's why we're leaving, because you're staying here. We love you. You're staying here. We're going. Jesus says to his disciples, guys, 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 hey, stop. This is not about where I'm going because you will come where I'm going. By the way, that means more than one thing, doesn't it? Peter's saying, let me go where you're going. And Jesus doesn't know how to tell him, I'm going to Calvary. They're going to whip me, meet, beat me, mock me, and kill me. But this is even more important than that. How can it be more important than that? I'm dying for you, but you've got to live for me. Listen, listen to the language. Listen to this. Lord, I, I, want, I want to go. And Jesus says, will you really lay down your life for me? Really? Then do what I tell you. Later he'll say, remain in my love and obey my command. Love one another, even as I've loved you, so you love one another. By this... Everybody in Fremont, everybody in the Bay Area, everybody in California, everybody in the world will look at you and say, oh, I get it. 
you are Jesus' people, aren't you? Not because of your T-shirt or your big Bible or your quote in scriptures, because of the way you deal with each other. The way country fans and rap fans can sit together and worship. The way Democrats and Republicans and independents and don't even talk to me about it can sit at the same table and love each other. The way Patriot fans and Colt fans and Rams fans and your team can sit at the same table. You, you, you realize the world just doesn't believe it because they don't often see it. So how do you do it? How do we live the kind of lives, how do we speak holy relationships? We move from last night holy me to tonight holy us. And I, again, I want to make it really, really simple. So I want to go to some basic teaching of Jesus. In fact, the greatest sermon I think that was ever preached was the sermon that Jesus preached that begins with something called the Beatitudes. You ever read the Beatitudes? It's in a, it's in a place called sometimes the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus didn't call it. That we often do because the Scripture tells of it being preached on a mount. But I want to change the Beatitudes for us tonight. And I asked some people to, be, to, to, to help me with this. I forgot to ask you, though, and now I am. Would you mind helping me with something, dude? Rock and roll. Come on. And the rest of the helpers, the rest of the folks who spoke, come, come on down. Give these guys a round of applause. They have no idea what they're in for. Sweetness. I'm going to ask all the, all, the, all the helper folks to come stand right up here. Just put your feet right on, right toes on, toes, toes on the edge of the green right there. Awesome. Sweet. Hi. Thank you so much. One, two, three, four, five, six. And there's one more person, and they're saying, oh, I hope they don't realize it's me. Huh. Come on. Come on down, dude. Rock and roll. Awesome. Awesome. How are you, man? I'm good. Good, good, good. Awesome. Great. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Perfect. Okay. And um, is there anybody, do you have any teachers here? Teach elementary school or junior high school? or Hi, what do you teach, ma'am? Kindergarten. That is so perfect. Would you mind helping Let's bring this kindergartner. Praise God for all our teachers. Way to go. Sweet. How's it going so far this year? It's so good. How many? Step up. My name's Jeff. What's yours? Sarah. That's correct, Ms. Sarah. Um, um, Sarah, Sa you always affirm. Sarah, um, how many kids you got in your class? 24. Wow. And they have never been in school. Well, I guess some of them go to preschool, right? But, right. but this is first time. Half day or full day kindergarten? Half day. Half Thank day. God. Yeah, no joke. <laughs> Praise God for small things. Okay. Um, have you ever read any of the Bible before? Yes. Okay. All right. Good. I'm going to ask you, if you would, to um, step right over here. And I'm going to ask you to turn to Matthew chapter Five, the Beatitudes, okay? In fact, we're just going to give you like four seconds to get there, and we'll see if you can do it. Let's count it down. Here we go. Four, three, two, one. You're going to heaven. Okay, awesome. All right, so what, what, what I'm going to get you to do is I'm going to get you, and as a teacher, you know how important this is, this is our lesson plan. So I just need you to keep me on track, moving from one to the next. When we come back, all you do is just read each one of these one at a time, each one of the blesseds, okay? Awesome. Thank you so much. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take these Beatitudes that you probably heard and read before, but we're going to turn them into relationship language. We're going to ask, what does it mean to love each other in such a way so that the whole world says, wow, that is just different. That is just so Jesus is what it is. And this wonderful crew right here is, is going to help. The first, let me do a little demo to kind of make it visual. Dude, would you step down and come stand right here? Awesome. Right there. Cool. And man, would you come down and would you step right here? Great, super, good deal. Scoot over just a little bit farther that way, and we'll get you right here. Yeah, that's going to work. And, um, dude, would you step down and come right to here? Awesome. Okay, good. Now, I'm going to ask you three guys to get on your hands and knees. Okay? 
Just right. Do it. Hands knee right there. Sweet. That's awesome. Okay, good. Okay. Let's go this way just a little bit and just stay put. All right. Now, great. What we're going to do is we're going to, I will need you centered a little bit. There we go. Perfect. We're going we're gonna to form a pyramid. So if you'll come right here, put your knee right there. And if you'll come here, put your knee right there. And then put, put one knee here and one knee here. You guys have done this, right? Cheerleaders, you know. Yeah. Just put your knee, put this knee here. To put you, put you, put you, put you, put you, put, put, put this. Put on my pants, my oh, pants. oh, pull your pants. Okay, I call. No, I got gotcha. you. Okay, put your knee here, put this knee here, and then put this one. Over. Have you never done a pyramid before? Just put this knee. Look, you just got to put. You got to. Okay, okay, this. Okay, wait. no, this knee has to. Okay, what's what's the problem here? Excuse me. Too far apart. Just like most of our churches. And we show up on Sunday morning, and we try and be family, and it's a stretch. Can I get a oh, yeah? And we find ourselves saying, you know, I just don't feel welcome here. I just don't feel like I have any friends here because we're so stinking far apart. And I don't mean physically. I mean that if I'm going to get close to you, I've got to learn how to have healthy, whole relationships. Thanks, guys. You can get up now. Healthy, whole relationships that are loving. So I'm going to give you from Jesus. In fact, the slide that says the one more, the, the world's greatest leverage tips, because I do believe Jesus is the world's greatest authority on love. Maybe the next one. I'm hoping. Possibly. All right. You ready, Sarah? Yes. Here we go. If you would, would you read the first beatitude? Awesome. What's your first name, dude? Deshaun. Deshaun. That's right. Come right down here, Deshaun. What I want you to do, you're going to be the first beatitude, okay? Now, did you hear the language? Sarah, read it one more time. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus here talks about poor people. He has a heart for folks who don't have all that they need. Many of us live lavish lives. And even though you may think, well, I'm not as wealthy as so-and-so, we have so much. And yet Jesus here says, blessed are the poor in money. Isn't that what he says, Sarah? It is? Wait, what? Bless, <laughs> blessed are the poor in money. Is that what it says? Does it mention money? Okay, well, read it again. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Okay, so it's not talking about rich and poor people. Poor in spirit. Spirit, okay, all right. Okay, so poor, what is it again? Poor in spirit. In spirit, okay, all right. Poor in spirit. So if it's not talking about money, what does it mean to be poor in spirit. Now, if, I've, if I'm rich in money, Deshaun, then I'm like, I got everything. I don't need anybody. I don't need anything. But if I'm poor, I'm like, man, can you help me out? Can you loan me? Can you take care of me? So if I'm poor in spirit, I believe Jesus is saying, blessed are you when you know you are not all that and a bag of chips. You are, you, are you with me on this? Blessed are you when you know you are a broken, busted person, which means the beginning step for relationship is admitting that and saying, I need you. Can you look out there and just say, I need you? I need you. Yeah, they use both hands. Like, you know, you just, you, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, imagine you're a little kid. You just saw your mama. Out there, I need you. Try it. There you go. All right. Okay. Now, Deshauna, you're going to need to say that good and loud so Grandma in the back can hear, all right? Now, what does it mean for me to say, I need you? No, no, but you got to hold your hands out. I need you. Okay, all right. Now, Deshauna is doing something natural, which is to look up and say, dear God. I need you. But you know, to the Christian family, I need to say, I need you. No, they're down here, brother. <laughs> yeah, see, I know. It's awkward, isn't it? It's awkward. It's like, I'm okay saying I need God, but I don't know about I don't know, I don't know about you. I don't know about you. You see, you will never be able to have a loving relationship until you're vulnerable enough to say, I need you. Because without your willingness to say, I need you. how in the world are you going to be in a loving relationship? Because a loving relationship is rooted in the fact that, I need you. Yeah. Say it with him. One, two, three. I need you. Now, now, many people won't go there. Because it's scary. I don't need you. I don't need this church thing. I can do my own thing. I don't need you. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I believe I begin by learning to say, you ready? I need you. Yeah. But listen to number two, Sarah. Jesus was an interesting person. Two or three times in scriptures, you find him getting up early in the morning. He loved the morning. 
And here he says, blessed are the, the morning, you know, the time it's early and the sun's coming up. Isn't that what it says, Sarah? No, it's not. It's not? Are you sure? Okay, what's the definition of M-O-U-R-N? Um, they're sad, they're broken hearted. Okay, well then, would you read it one more time? When you get to the word mourn, would you like read it like sad and broken hearted when you read the word mourn for us? <laughs> Man, just, just think we're all kindergartners and you'll rock it. Okay, all right, here, here we go. Go for it. Okay, just say, I mean like broken hearted, Sarah. Take a half step back, Dijon, give her some room. Okay, okay, all right, here we go. Beatitude number two. Wow, that is awesome! Well done, okay. Jump down, jump down, man, right here, right here, jump down. <laughs> Blessed are those who mourn, okay? So, if mourning means to express sadness, which is exactly what Sarah said, if mourning means to express sadness, watch how this works. I get into a relationship with somebody because I say to them, I need and as soon as I come into that relationship, guess what? I step on their toes or they step on mine. We're like two porcupines kissing. We're going to hurt each other. Is everybody with me on this? That's what happens. And then I need to mourn. I believe Jesus would focus mourning on mourning over my mistakes, my sin, my I didn't want to do that. I'm so sorry. Instead of saying I am sorrowful, what's your name, man? Jamel. Jamel, I need you to look out there, and I need you just to say I'm sorry. Okay, but you got to say, you got to imagine you, you know, you took, you took grandma's cookies or whatever. She's way in the back and she can't hear you. Go for it. Sorry. <laughs> Dude, that will come in handy when you're married. Let me tell you. <laughs> You do that well, man. Put your hands together like this, like, oh, dude, like mom just caught you eating the cookies you weren't supposed to eat, and say it good and loud. Ready? Go for it. One, two, three. What did I just say? I'm sorry. Okay. Mommy, I, don't, I didn't like the cookies. No, no, no. <laughs> just go for it. I'm sorry. Ready? I'm sorry. Yeah. Now, stick with me. Stick with me, because Jamel's making this so much fun, we're going to miss something if we're not. Well, here's an O'Malley moment for you. There are people in your life right now who have been waiting for you to say, I'm sorry. Because they don't think you can say. I'm sorry. Let's all try it together. One, two, three. I'm sorry. Yeah. If your spouse just went finally, then you understand. <laughs> and there are people who think that young people in our generation are never willing to say, I'm sorry. Tell them. I'm sorry. Yeah. One more time, good and loud. I'm sorry. Yeah. Watch how this works. I get into a relationship with you, and in a loving relationship, I say, I need you. But as soon as we get messed up, I'm like, forget it. No, 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 no. Blessed are those who mourn, who are willing to express. Say it. I'm sorry. And watch what happens when you add number three. Sarah. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Meek. Jesus is not talking about people who are weak, is he? He's talking about people who are meek. meek. How would you? Meek is a tough word. If you were defining meekness to your kindergartners, how would you define me? I know. You probably wouldn't because it's like, it's eighth grade word, meek is. Because some people think meek is weak. You know, meek is like I'm a doormat and you just walk all over me. Meekness, here's the interesting thing about this word, the background of the word. It means strength held in reserve. So I want you to imagine uh, the Clydesdales, right? Okay? And they're pulling the wagon. And up sitting on the top of the wagon is this little guy. I mean, he may not be a little guy, but compared to the horse, he's tiny, right? And all he has to do is pull back on the little reins, and this giant horse holds back, not because the guy is stronger than the horse, but the horse holds all that strength in reserve. Now, what does that look like in real? I'm Jeff. What's your name, man? Alex. Alex. Um, Alex, what does that look like in relationship? Okay, if I've got the strength, if I've got the power, if I've got the control, then I can take what you got if I want it. I can treat you the way I want to because I am in charge. Unless I understand what Jesus says when he says, blessed are the meek. What a blessing on you when you... How about looking out there and just saying, I respect you. Try it. 
the hand? Uh, yeah, yeah, in fact, here, let's do the Wayne's World. Let's just give it this. We'll, get, we'll give it this, and we'll say, I respect you, just like totally seriously. Go for it. I respect you? Yeah, only, only really loud, really loud. Try it with me. I respect you. I mean, really, just imagine, go back in the day and imagine you walk in to your grandma or your dad or your mom or your teacher, who are you ever, and you just walk in and say, you know, I want to tell you something. Here we go. I respect you. Yeah. You think they'd buy that? No. Okay, all right, okay. <laughs> Let's work it a little bit. Let's work it a little bit. What does it mean to walk into somebody and say, say it with me, Alex. Come on, two hands like this. Here we go. I respect you. Yeah, you got to kind of bend it a little, little, little. Okay. <laughs> whoa, whoa, oh, good. Whoa, it's a man bun. I like that. Okay, all right. It's good. it's good looking. My wife wants me to get one, but I ain't got it. Okay, one more time. Here we go. Say it with me. I Now. This is just going to get so tense in like 10 seconds. You ready? There are people who we virulently disagree with. We don't like the way they behave. We don't like the choices they make. We don't agree with what they say. But does that give us the right to be jerks for Jesus? Is everybody with me on this? The world has plenty of jerks for Jesus, okay? And what we're called on to say is, you know what? I may totally disagree with you. I may not like what you're doing, but you are the creation of God. And therefore, say it with me. Do you know how much the world would change? Just if we could do these truly, these three things in our relationships, how people would stop and stare. Alex, I was in a, I was in a uh, McDonald's. Man, this has been forever ago. I was in, uh, no, I don't got it with me. I, I was in a McDonald's a while back, and um, I saw, well, let's see, the easiest way to tell it is to say, I came in, I had like 15 minutes for lunch. You know what I mean? You get 15 minutes for lunch, you run in McDonald's, it's always the new girl behind the counter, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. quarter pounder, quarter pound, just <laughs> press a button, man. And so I'm in line, and I'm waiting, I'm staring at my watch, and I'm waiting and trying to be patient, and there's like three people in front of me, and there's this guy in front of me who is big enough to play on an NFL team. Big shoulders, big and tall. And I'm looking at him going, God, why did you give him that? And you gave me this. And I'm, I'm looking at this guy when I hear this tiny little voice go, Harold, Harold. And he goes, what? And his wife is like across the McDonald's. She, I'm not telling, joking. She's like this big. Cute little redheaded gal. And she goes, get the milk for Jim. They have this little baby. And he's sitting in one of the little baby things. And he's like, okay, I'll get him the milk. And then she goes, no, 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 wait, no, get the orange juice. What, do you want the milk or the orange juice? I'm thinking, how did these two get together, right? He's like this. What did their wedding photos look like, you know? Smile. I mean, you can, you can, you can, you can. The, oh, you get a chair. You yeah, get a chair, these days. get a chair so you can stand on it. So I'm standing here and thinking all this when three things happen at the same time. The people in front of me, of him, finally got their food. She said, okay, okay, get the milk. And he turns and goes, do you want the milk or the orange juice, babe? And at the same time, a kid who had to be about 13 years old pulls up on a bike, walks into McDonald's, and the girl behind the counter goes, I'll help who's next, because that's what they train him to do. They don't say, come here. They go, I'll help whoever's next. And this kid steps in front of six of us in line and just goes, I'm next, and starts ordering. <laughs> Me, there was this lady behind us who went, oh. No, you are not. I mean, you know, we're all like, oh, no, you do not do that. But then we realize we got this because Gigantor goes, Ugh. <laughs> and I'm thinking, this kid is dead. And he starts giving his order. I want a fish fillet and an order of fries and a large Coke. And, and the big guy just took one hand and went thump and put it on the kid's shoulder. And I couldn't see him, I just saw his back. But when I saw his head go on the shoulder, I knew it was gonna be sweet. And I heard this giant voice say, excuse me, were you in front of me? <laughs> I wish I could have seen the kid's face because this snarky voice goes, yeah, you wanna make something of it? <laughs> I mean, we all went, whoa, and stepped back. This child had to be the world's only living brain donor because he was like, yeah, I want that. And the big guy's shoulders tense. And he, he goes like this. And I'm thinking, oh, no, no, don't, 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 don't. And then his shoulders, I could see him relax. And then I heard this big voice say, whatever. 
the lady behind me goes, no, not whatever. <laughs> and he just lets him get the food. Doesn't say a thing. The guy gets his tray, walks away, throwing a look back like, yeah. And I'm standing in line thinking, when I get my food, I am finding you. I am sitting down and preaching to you while you eat. And at that moment, the girl behind the counter says to the big guy, that was really cool of you. And the big guy goes, God's been pretty patient with me. And I'm the preacher, right? And I'm supposed to be preaching. I wanted to tap him on the shoulder. If I could reach you, tap him on the shoulder and say, dude, you must know a friend of mine named Jesus because that was meekness right there. He didn't have to respect the punk. He could have said, get out of here. But instead, he was like, yeah, okay. Strength held in reserve. Say it with him. Ready? We need to learn how to say, I respect you. One more time. Here we go. One, two, three. I respect. Okay, let's see if we can do all three. Do all three with emotions and you'll remember them. I don't know which one of these God brought you here tonight to hear, but let's see if you can say them with me. Number one. No, you got to do it with him. Number two. Number three. Number four. Quick, Sarah. Step right down. (laughs) They're not hungering and thirsting for food. What are they hungering and thirsting for? What's the root word of righteousness? What's the root word of righteous? Right? Right. Right, right, exactly. Okay, right is the word. All right, cool. The root word of righteous is right. I, I'm Jeff. Barry. Barry, raise your right hand like this. Point at this guy and say, I want to do what is right. Yeah, but say it good and loud for them. Oh, come on, twice that. I want to do what is right. Exactly, and now... I want you to add to it the word regardless at the end of it. So you're going to say, I want to do what is right, and then waggle that finger like regardless. Okay, go. Do what is right regardless. There you go. Now, you ready? Because you're going to do that several times. I want that same intensity. (laughs) Do you realize this is the guy that every employer is looking for? A person who will say, I want to do what is right regardless. This is the guy we're looking for for a best friend who will say, I want to do what's right regardless. Let me tell you, there are women out there who are wondering if there's a man who would say, I want to do what is right regardless. (laughs) (laughs) You're selling it now, man. You're selling it now. But here's the thing. That's costly. Okay, what if doing what's right costs you your job? Come on, come on, come on. Do what is right regardless. Okay, wait a minute. What if doing what's right means somebody else gets the promotion, not you? I'm going to do what is right regardless. What if doing what's right means you get thrown in jail? I'm going to do what is right regardless. What if it means you lose that girl? <laughs> Dude, now listen, listen now. Let me tell you something. I got something I want you to hear. Say it to him. I need you. Okay, all right, so here we go. Do what is right regardless. Now, isn't this so easy and fun to think about saying this? Tell me how it would change the relationships at your work, in your community, in your marriage, with your family. If you guys said, you know what? Let's all say it together. Put your finger up. Here we go. Come on now. Lead them in it. Go for it. I want to do what is right regard. Yes. Yes. And watch how they fit together. Here we go. One, two, three. Ready? Yes. And, and learn to say. And now what has happened here, some would say, is we just emptied, we just emptied the cup and started to fill it. What do you mean? I start by emptying myself of my pride. I need you. I continue by emptying myself of my shame. I am sorry. I empty myself of my rights. You can't do that. Tell you what, I respect you. And here I am empty before God. And he says, let me fill you up, hungering and thirsting for what is right and watch what it connects to. Go, Sarah. Just go down. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Now, what does it mean to be merciful? Not just having a little mercy, but merciful. Your name again? Maddie. Maddie, thank you so much for helping me. Maddie, I want you to be merciful. And to give somebody mercy is not to give them what they deserve. Praise God. God is not going to give us what we deserve. Amen. 
years, <laughs> Maddie years ago, a sweet little lady at the church where I preached down in Southern California. She's an older lady, and we'd had one of her friends who'd had a heart attack and passed away, and she came to me in the lobby after church, and she said, Brother Jeff, do you think if I died today, I've done enough? And I told her, oh, I know you haven't. <laughs> she said, what? I said, I said, I know you haven't because none of us have. Can I get it? Oh, yeah? None of us have done. The greatest, nicest person you think you've ever met, they haven't done enough because you cannot do enough to earn salvation, but praise God, Jesus did. Amen? So we get to give. You ready? I want you to do this and then do this. So here's your movement. Boom, boom. And you're going to say, I have forgiven you. I have forgiven you. Already. Already. Yeah, try it once, good and loud. I have forgiven you. Already. Right, right. So I for, say it. Now, what does that mean? That means before I stand around, well, I'm not going to forgive you until you say, no, 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 I have. I've forgiven you already. Wait a minute. What if I borrow your car and I wreck it? I've forgiven you already. And when I wreck your car? I've forgiven you already. I don't have any insurance. I've forgiven you already. Okay, and I hit this guardrail and they want you to pay for it. <laughs> Tell me what would happen in your marriage if you said to your spouse, I've forgiven you already. I've heard too many spouses say, if you ever did that, if you ever did that, I'm out of here. I've forgiven you already. You know, there are people who come to church and think, if they ever knew what I've done. I've forgiven you already. Because that's, you sound a little bored there uh, with that. <laughs> Jesus said on the cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. They, haven't, they don't even know it yet. And Jesus is, says, I've forgiven you already. Awesome. Now watch what gets added to this and how they work together. Come on down, man. Brian. Go, Sarah, go. What's your name? Brian. Brian. Thanks, Brian. Brian. The pure in heart. He's not talking about poor, is he? Or is it poor in heart? Pure. 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 Okay. And what is, what is pure? How would you define that for a kindergartner? Um, clean. Innocent. Clean. Okay. Clean. Innocent. Like a clean, like a totally clean window, completely transparent. We'll do it this way, Brian. Raise your right hand like this and say, I'll be honest with you always. I'll be honest with you always. What if it gets you in trouble? I'll be honest with you always. Really? I'll be honest with you always. Oh, okay. Okay. So even if it's easier to lie with you always. Does this shirt make me look fat? I'll be honest with you always. Let's say it with him. I'll be honest with you always. Okay, I'm just going to just drop the ball here. Our society doesn't buy that. They think everybody lies on their resume. Nobody tells the truth when they get pulled over. Everybody cheats on their taxes. And nobody tells their spouse everything. What does it take to have a loving relationship in which you say, I'll be honest with you always. Well, let me tell you what, you're not going to say that unless you know your spouse has already said, I've forgiven you already. Because I'm not going to say, <laughs> I'll be honest with you always. If I know that you're just, oh, did you, I can't believe. I've forgiven you already. And you're thinking, I don't know if I can do that. Are you tracking with this? Here we go. Let's see if we can do it together. Number one. Oh, you got to do it louder than that. Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Regardless. Number five. And number six. It's with you always. <laughs> Brian, I notice they're still struggling with that. Let's say that last one together. I will be. All right, we got to hurry up and finish. Number seven, read it out loud, Sarah. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Dude, come here for a minute. What's your name? Lalo. Pardon me? Lalo. Lalo, thanks for helping, man. Lalo, come here. You stand right there, face me, put your hands behind your back, stick your chest out. We're going to do a third grade fight, okay? You ready? Okay. All you got to say is right now, okay? That's all you got to say. Ready? Okay. Come on. 
right now. Come on. Right now. Come on. Right now. You woman. Right now. What are all the other kids shouting? Yeah, fight, fight, fight. Yeah, and the angels are weeping while you do because the scripture says, blessed are the... No, note that's not peace lovers. Peace is like homemade bread. Everybody loves it, but very few are going to take the time to make it. Peace is a whole lot easier to love than it is to make. Jesus says, blessed are the peace makers. Would you please stick your hand out like that and say good and loud, let me be the first to stop the fighting. Try that. Let me be the first to stop the fighting. Okay, good. I'm going to ask you to do that twice as loud. You ready? Go for it. Let me be the first to stop the fighting. Okay, now this is the moment. Freeze frame that. Because this is the Oprah Winfrey special, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, we're all going to be good. Let me show you what reality looks like. Go for it. Let me be the first. I forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. Oh, you know what you need to say, right? Yeah, okay. All right. All right. So here we go. Let me be the first, Let me be the first to, stop the fighting. to stop the fighting. Good deal. One more time. Let me be the first to stop the fighting. Bad hanging in the air. Don't leave me hanging. <laughs> it's going to happen, isn't it? But that's what Christians do. Because, by the way, while he's got that out there, that pretty much leaves him defenseless. And somebody says, <laughs> somebody says, if I strike you on the one cheek, what are you going to do? Yeah, he's going to move that right up here. No. Let me be the first to stop the fighting. Can I say this? There are some marriages that desperately need this one. We get on each other's case. We let each other down. We forget. We lie. We say something that we shouldn't have said. And then we wait. There are friendships that need this. Say it with him. Let me be the first to stop the fight. Do it with your hand and you remember it. Let me be the first to stop the fight. All right, jump in line there, and let's see if we got them all now. Let's see if we can rock right down this. You ready? On account, we're just going to go straight out. You remember yours, right? You, re you got the hat off. He's ready to go. All right, let's see if we can say all these together. Here's the Beatitudes in relationship. Number one. I need you. Number two. I'm sorry. Number three. I you. Number four. I'm what is right regardless. Number five. I you number six. I will be I always. And number seven. Be the first to stop the fight. All right. And that's all the Beatitudes, right? Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Wow. And there's one more. Read that one. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil okay. against you because of me. Um, I apologize. I need one. Hi. What's your name? Pardon me, Kirsten, come here really, really quick. We, we, we need to finish. We're already running over time, but I forgot this last one. Okay, Kirsten, here's your deal. This last beatitude is all about people who think that if you do all these things that these guys and gals here did, that everybody's going to love you and they're going to treat you great, and they're not. Some of them aren't going to like you because of your sweater or because of your hair or because of your green toenails or, 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 or something else. Some of them aren't going to like you because you're a girl or because you have freckles or because your eyes are kind of brown. So what are you going to do? Do you have any brothers and sisters? You have a sister. Does your sister ever make you mad? Yes. What should you do when your sister pokes you and makes you mad? Your mother's praying right now. <laughs> Okay, so you shouldn't hit her back, right? No. No, in fact, what is it Maddie said a minute ago? Um, I'll be the first to stop the fight. Well, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, the other Maddie did, yes. No, that's right, that's right. Here's yours. You're, you're going to give me two karate chops, and you're going to say, I will cut you slack. Say if you can say it with me. I will cut you slack. Good, look right out there and say it. I will cut you slack because Jesus did it for me. You see... Yeah, Jesus said that blessed are those who are persecuted because they're trying to do the right thing and other people still make fun of them. 
I will cut you slack. Why? Because Jesus did it for me. I'll make allowances for your bad days. Do it with me. Here we go, Kirsten. I will cut you slack because Jesus did it for me. One more time. I will cut you slack because Jesus did it for me. When all else fails, go to number eight. Get right over there in line, would you? And let's see if these guys can remember all of, in fact, even, even better than that. Step out right here, dude. Right here, would you? And would you step out right here? Would you step out right here? And, man, would you step right here? And would you step right here? And would you guys get out on all fours? Come on, right now. Shoulder to shoulder, because we, now, now, we, now we know how to do it. Okay, y'all, you know the drill. Right here, right here, right here. Come on, right there. You got this. You got this. Just knees, knees right. Yeah. Put, your, put one knee right here and one knee right here. Thank you. Got it. Yeah, yeah, right here. And then, Alex, we're depending on you, man. Okay, now, Christian, you're going to now put your hands down because Christian's going to get on y'all shoulders. You ready? Okay, all right. Here we go. Oop. Okay, good. Okay. All right, here we go. There we go. Good. Now, hold still. 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 Sarah, step over here and, 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 and spot for me. Okay, hold still. Alex, hold still, man. Hold it up, Alex. Hold it up, dude. You got this. You got this. Okay, now, you're going to show them how much you appreciate them, not with applaud, but by saying the eight Beatitudes. You ready? All right. Okay, here we go. Oh, just a sec. Just a sec. Guys, guys, whatever happens, do not do the hand motions. Okay, all right. Here we go. Say, let's say it with them. I need number two. I'm... Number three, I, number four, I do what is right. Number five, I will be giving you already. Number six, I will be, oh wait, number seven, let me be the, to stop the, and number eight, I will cut you slack because Jesus did it for, give him a round of applause. Woo! Woo! Wow. Man. Well done. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Give these guys a big round of applause. Kirsten, come here. You were awesome. You were super. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Sarah, well done. All right. At a moment like this, you're thinking, oh, this is just too much. All those things, I can't remember all of them. So I'm going to say a prayer, and I'm going to ask you to talk to God about one of them. Because I bet there's one that might have stuck in your throat. It might have been that one where your spouse kind of went, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It might have been that one where everybody else in the youth group was kind of looking. Or your other young single buddies were kind of like, yeah. Because when God brings us to a place like this, and he's trying to revive us and make us whole, then what he's doing is he's preparing us to live as a holy us, for by this all men you'll know, will know that you're my disciples by the way that you love one another. Bow your head. Father, thanks, Lord, for tonight. Thanks for the joy of study and fun. Thanks for the people that are out there taking care of the kids. And God, we're about to join them. But Lord, um, God, there's some of these that stick in our throat that we need to practice that we need to repent about. For some of us, it's saying, I I need you. God, maybe it's saying, I need you to you, but it's probably saying, I need you to one another. For others of us, it's saying, I've forgiven you already, or I will be honest with you always. God, I believe there's some people right in this room who may need to do what is right regardless, even tonight. And maybe some of us need to pull somebody over after the revival tonight and just say, can I talk with you? I need to do the right thing. Some of us need to say, I'm sorry. And some of us need to say, I have just forgiven you already. God, some of us have friends and neighbors that we ought to invite tomorrow night. But we've been scared to do it. Lord, will you give us the courage to do what is right regardless? Will you give us the heart to love those around us so much that we wouldn't think of going to heaven without them? So, Father, may we reach out and invite and encourage and just show love like Jesus called us to. And finally, God, for anybody who's here in this building and going, I 
I don't know Jesus, at least not like you're talking about. Who may have thought about being a Christian, who may have thought about being baptized, who may have thought about giving their life to Christ. Father, I pray when we dismiss in just a couple minutes that they'd find Tim or they'd find Jeff or one of the pastors and they'd just, they'd just say, I want to talk. I, I want to do what is right regardless. And Father, as we sing this final worship song, will you just... Will you just let each one of us focus on the phrase you brought us here to hear? And so, God, I'm going to hush up and I'm going to give this great house full of folks a moment of silence so they can silently talk to you about the phrase that they need to work on. God, during this moment, will you just hear our hearts as we all silently talk to you? Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you've forgiven us already in Jesus. May we accept that great gift, trusting in you, being baptized into Christ's name for the forgiveness of our sins and living a life of love. Father, I pray this building will fill up again tomorrow night as we bring friends and neighbors and we take the next step of what it means to live whole in a world that at times is so broken and busted. But Father, you may not even let us have two more nights of the revival. You, you may send Jesus tonight. So may we all be ready to meet him by claiming him as our Savior. I pray that in Christ Jesus' holy name and all that agree say, amen.